Mm -hmm. Hello. Uh, you have already seen the overview videos as well as the video on the accessories that come with the quick shot handheld unit. Today we're going to cover the operation of the handheld unit for hazardous substance analysis. First thing you would do is you take the handheld unit out of a container. You would first turn it on. You depress the button for about three seconds. The green light would come on. You then turn the PDA on. That's also included as one of the accessories to the handheld unit. You would go to the start key once it fires up. Go to the ROHS program or ROHAS program. It then loads onto the PDA. At this point, I already have standard set out for us to run. So we will be running the silver initialization, uh, polyethylene blank, a polyethylene low, and a polyethylene high. I'll go over what those numbers are soon enough. Once you come into the Rojas program, you will then depress test mode, which is the first button on the main screen. It then gives you the selection of the different programs you can run for that specific analysis. We have steel, tin, PVC, polyethylene, magnesium, aluminum, and a copper zinc or, or brass compilation. What these are is substrates that uh, solders may be on for lead-free testing and such. We also made a program for demonstration purposes called PE2. That's the one we're going to use for today with the curves that we have loaded into the machine. So you first highlight the PE2, then hit the check mark, and it will load into the program. Once it loads, it comes back to the main screen. You then need to initialize that specific method. It asks you for the silver. You'll hit OK and have approximately five seconds bringing the laser down onto the part covering the silver. It then takes approximately 15 seconds to register that the silver is there and then it will do the initialization. So we will wait for it. Once we're done with the initialization we will then hit OK, go to the main screen, and start analyzing samples. And there is your installation is complete. So now we go back to the main page, which is the bottom corner. Hit Start, and it will come to the screen. We can name this something. In this case, I'm just going to run the program just for the demonstration purposes, but many times we'll put in standard PE low, PE high, or blank, depending on what we're running. Hit the check mark that accepts that program name, and then we'll move to the standard. In this case, I'm going to the PE blank. Please note that the unit is defaulted to run through the software, not the trigger. As you can see, I'm not even holding the trigger. I currently have my hand on the battery pack. But it is running, as you look at the PDA, it's 10 seconds in, now to 11. At 10 seconds, it starts showing numbers. Don't be alarmed if it shows a, a number that you think is a little high on a blank to start. As the program runs, that number will come down. Approximately every 10 seconds, it'll do an update. We've got this running today at 40 seconds for the demonstration purposes. The unit comes defaulted at 200 seconds. When we make a program, as we do later on in the series, we're going to run it for 100 seconds. We found that is kind of the best balance for the customer of a precise number as well as a decent run time. Their hands don't get tired holding the unit up. Okay, it says OK here. We're at counted out. That means the program's done. The only thing that showed up as a hit was mercury, and please realize anything under 20 ppm really isn't there anyways. So we're going to go back to the main page, hit start, and I'm again just going to hit the go key, I'm going to move to the PE low. 
The reason I say 20 ppm mercury really isn't there is that in the hazardous substance applications, you don't even start worrying about mercury until you get to 1,000 ppm. So this PE low, our first standard. Our cadmium will be approximately 100, our lead 400, our chrome 400, our mercury 200, and our bromine 500. So as you can see, until you get to these limits, that anything else is really non-detect. And that's really what we're looking for with this kind of machine is a non-detect number. In this case, my chrome is already reading approximately 500. My bromine is at 500. My CAD is at 90 out of 100. My mercury is at 150 out of 200. And my lead is 427 on a 400. So as you can see, even at 40 seconds, the numbers are already coming closer. It'll only get better in time. Once the unit says OK after the 40 seconds, you can move on. At this point, however, before I move to the next screen and do one more run. As you can see, this is the spectrum. It says P2 measure completed. By pressing and holding on the screen and letting go, for this specific measurement mode, we can then click on Chrome and show each peak. There's the Chrome. Press and hold again. And just for demonstration, I'll show the lead. And there's the lead peak. So this way, the person can highlight each element to make it easier for them to see just how much is there in the matrix. You're also able to increase the intensity of the matrix and decrease it so as to better view that specific peak. Also, at this point, with it finished, you can look at the test result, which is where we were running, and the history of the test mode. In the history, it will show everything that was run for that specific mode. The specific analysis numbers will be over here to the right. In time, what we do is we'll take these numbers, click to Excel, and we can actually use this Save As screen to save it to the SD card that comes with the unit and transfer it to a desktop for further uh, data entry. So to review how to run, we'll go back to the main page. We'll do our PE high. Simply hit the start key. Name it if you need to name it. Hit the check mark for OK. And then you move the unit. Again, there's a laser there. And you have approximately five seconds to move your unit to the next standard. Go back to the spectrum so you can see it. Again, here you can see that the chrome is still there as far as showing it, as well as the, the lead is now the, the light green peak. We'll reduce the intensity on not quite that much. You can also just tab the arrow. So there you can see the, the other elements fairly well. And we'll add a couple. I always think it's good to see where the cadmium is, so we'll cadmium and that comes up right here you can see that peak fairly well and from here we can click back to the test result result of the spectrum is what we're currently running our chrome and this is approximately a thousand our lead is approximately 1200 our cadmium is 300 our bromine is 1100 and our mercury is 1100. So as you can see all these are within approximately 10 percent of the goal and uh, that's what this unit is for and how it will screen. It says OK. So this analysis is done. I've gone through the data operation as well. We'll do more with that when we show calibration and that's all I have today for the operation of the Quick Shot XRF.